Welcome back and today is a Monday. We are on the 19th of uh, September. Time check 10.30pm Singapore Asia time or you're watching from the US that will be 10.30am Eastern Standard Time. Welcome back to the Monday and we have a big, big grind. <laughs> so how's everybody? I want to check in who's uh, with us here on the live stream right now and I just type in right here, welcome back. And you have a live live with us, just fire away. And I want to pay my greetings to all of our live audience. And if you are very new to joining us for the first time, you can watch us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, quite a number of platforms to reach out to us, all right? So uh, let's pay our greetings to Jeffrey, Manfred, good to see all of you, Isabella, Kelvin, Wilson. Yes, thank you all for joining us and... Some more names coming in. Okay, uh, I see Kinip as well, Angel and John. Wow, now you guys are very, very familiar and firing off really, really fast. All right, thank you very much. I see Jacqueline and uh, Jeanette as well. Now, what do we have on a Monday? We are still on the same path. We've done a lot of work last week until on Sunday, we were analyzing on the Fed, FOMC interest rate hikes that's coming up on this Wednesday. And to be really, really precise, it will be Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That will translate to Asia Thursday, 2 a.m. Singapore Asia Time. All right? So everything is geared up for this big event. And of course, right now, there's kind of a tilt in the balance because one camp says that we are in a recession. The other camp says that inflation kind of a taper now and looks like it's a balancing act. No one knows the real answer. And I, you know, I was just watching on Twitter. I was watching on uh, YouTube. I was uh, watching on whatever media outlets out there and kind of uh, very divisive, all right? We are kind of half split. Uh, okay, so let me give you a clear, clear understanding so that you don't, don't get distracted. First off, let's accept the fact that no one has a crystal ball to kind of uh, proclaim that we are down the slippery road ahead or we're going to rebound and all that. What we can do is to make do with whatever data that we have today. All right, so just be very, very clear. No one is, no one can proclaim he has the right path. But that being said, we still got to formulate our thesis. All right, so on this note, you know, I'm going to pull out a few uh, important news and the news that I'm going to show you right now is not, not uh, directly relevant to the stock market, but it's a key data that I think we really need to understand and kind of uh, shock everybody out there, right? So I hope you guys can handle this. <laughs> and this shouldn't come as a shock to uh, those of you who have been following our channels uh, really, really closely. And I want you to be mentally prepared for that, okay? So here we go. I see all of you out there. And um, let me just switch over from the live chat. And we're going to start off from this piece of news, which is not the most important news of the day, but kind of a recap. Three, two, one. Here we go. Ethereum plunges after SEC chair Gary Gensler says the merge could make crypto a security, which is which is what we have been preaching all this, all this time. And uh, we have uh, three theses on this. Number one, we spoke very, very um, uh, publicly about our thesis on Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin falls under CFTC, Commodities Futures Trading Commission, because it is the only decentralized crypto coin, the mother of all coins, the first of all coins, that's not controlled by any man, any government agencies, any corporations, it is 100% decentralized, all right? So it cannot fall under SEC because it has no interest bearing on the yield of the coin itself. So we tackle the first thesis. The second thesis is that all other coins outside Bitcoin will fall under SEC because uh, anyone who bought into those coins expect some form of return. The third thesis, the only exception where it's hanging on the loose is Ethereum itself, ETC, ETH. And for Ethereum, we kind of uh, been on the same track as Michael Saylor. We believe that it is generating interest. Uh, you know, they did an ICO for Ethereum itself. 
And right now, the moment it goes, they go into a merge, means it has shifted from proof of work and shifted over to proof of stake. And the concept of proof of stake is that you're going to earn interest by staking 32 ethers and you're going to uh, be part of the mining pool to earn own interest, all right? So uh, this is so obvious, but most people believe that it will not fall under SEC. Unfortunately, I have to show you this article right now, right? This, this is the big article, kind of a spin-off from the original article that's published on Wall Street Journal. And uh, uh, let me, let me uh, give you exactly what Gary, Gary Gensler has said on this article here itself, all right? So this is a pretty, pretty scary article. Uh, let me adjust my mouse and here we go, all right? We start from here. And therein lies the problem moving to a proof-of-stake system means that people who invest in Ethereum and then stake their Ether are treating the investment as something closer to a security than a currency, especially since very few people actually use Ether to pay for things. And staking has drawn the attention of people like SEC Chairman Gary Gensler, who made comments after the merge. You know, he waited, he, he bid it for his time, he waited right after the merge and to proclaim this statement. From the coin's perspective, there's another indicia that under the Howey test, the investing public is anticipating profits based on the efforts of others. Gensler said on Thursday, according to a report from the Wall Street Journal. So that's it, done. All right. So I want to highlight this piece of article to you. And if you are on the paid subscription model of the Wall Street Journal, you can read the full article called Ether's new staking model could draw SEC attention. SEC chairman says system used by Ether following software update could trigger securities loss. That is the nail on the coffin. That's it. Rest in peace. <laughs> okay. So um, for those of you who kind of um, been very, very fervent about, maybe the right word is uh, obstinate about Ether not falling under SEC, I think you've got to take a second look at this article. These two articles I just uh, referenced to you. Go and dive deeper. And it's going to be very, very tricky. Especially those that stake 32 ethers on the proof of stake on the Ethereum org. I think uh, once you stake it, I, don't, I think it's going to be difficult to, to take it out. Uh, that's, that's my belief, all right? Uh, no matter what, what the technology says, because there might be a blockade uh, imposed by SEC just to determine who are participating in the proof of stake. All right, so this is like, um, I call it dangerous ground and uh, we better don't test it. <laughs> by the time something happens, it's going to be too late, all right? So I want to draw attention to that and I hope uh, you take it in a positive light not the best of news for those of you who are uh, supporters of Ethereum. Uh, but that's the fact is the fact, all right? So I think the only one that is untouchable remains to be a Bitcoin itself, okay? So I want to kind of give you guys a quick update on that. And uh, if you're okay with this update, and then let me just turn on back to my uh, live chat chat and just make sure... Are you okay? <laughs> and if you're okay, I, can I just uh, see your response on the live chat chat? And then we can uh, start our uh, analysis today. Okay, thank you. Uh, you guys are good on this. Um, we have uh, Kinip, Elkin, Christopher, Edwin, uh, Jay, John, Hiram. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, looks like you guys are all ready. And let's come back to the stock market itself, okay? Now, as it stands right now, I just kind of uh, got a, another alert from Wall Street Journal that's telling me that Fed Chairman Jerome Powell is looking at the 1980s playbook and we'll keep fighting inflation until the job is finished. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> we done this analysis on Saturday and Sunday about the interest rate and the terminal rate and you know what it takes to bring inflation down to 2%, all right? So this is a... Uh, this is going to be challenging for this Thursday and I want to make sure all of you are ready, ready. So I kind of uh, fired off two trades this morning, uh, as in uh, opening bell this morning, morning, all right? So let me review uh, the two trades I fired off and so some of you can keep in check, especially if you are alerted of a trade notification like this. So I sold off a Netflix to make a profit of 1390 And this is one of those trades where, you know, I aspire to buy at a very, very low uh, option premium. Typically, I'm aiming like $0.10 cents or $0.05. Cents. Uh, max, max is about $0.15, cents, all right? So uh, that's the kind of uh, premium I go and bargain really, really hard. And if there's an any, any turn around, I just sell it off really, really soon, all right? So this is one trade. The other trade is a TCOM. So TCOM uh, entered on the Friday. So just give you some basic uh, lessons right here. Entered on a Friday. Uh, you will see it as a Saturday because this is displayed according to Singapore time. That means to say on Saturday 1 a.m., which is Friday 1.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you know, my system triggered to buy TCOM at $2. And today at the opening bell, uh, 12 minutes after the opening bell, I sold at 2.40. So you kind of uh, divide out, that's a uh, um, 0.4 divided by 2, uh, that's 20% profit in just one day, all right? So uh, this is what we have been saying to all of you. In this market, we still go out there, fight really, really hard each day to make that 5 to 100% profit return in one day, all right? So uh, this is the second trade i done for today. Now, there are some trades out there I'm still waiting, waiting, and, you know, it's kind of uh, really mind-boggling because the market is right now is just uh, non-direction. -non non-direction because everybody is anticipating for um, uh, FOMC interest rate hike. So I got another position on uh, uh, Chevron and CD Group. Uh, those are really nice position, uh, hoping for bigger profits and all that, okay? So we kind of uh, introduce you. Make sure you go and check your portfolio. Uh, we probably, you guys, if you are with me on Don't Stop Believing Trade Notification, you are triggered on those trades that we bargain very, very hard. So can you please look into your portfolio right now? And don't try to uh, uh, bargain less. you got to bargain more. That means to say, if I place a price to buy at 20 cents, and after a long time, it didn't get filled, please don't go and start adjusting from 25 cents you want to buy, you increase to 25, uh, from 20 cents you want to buy, you increase to 25 cents, and then you increase to 30 cents, increase to 35 cents just to get it filled. Don't do that. This is the environment that we must bug in like crazy, crazy, really crazy, all right? And let the market maker fall towards you. And that means they bite your price because we already bargain very, very hard. All right. So remember that. And do not be impatient. All right. You know, I kind of uh, get some feedbacks. Uh, you know, like, you know, oh, so many students, every time we always got one or two weirdos that, that join our community. <laughs> Sorry. I I really have to use the word weirdo because, you know, the instruction is so clear, but you want to change the rule, break the rules, and then uh, you get all upset with yourself, right? So uh, be very patient. Every day we fire off a trade doesn't mean all the, trade, all the trades that we fire off must get filled on the day. This is not the environment to chase your trades to get filled. Today is the environment whereby you chase very, very hard on the bargaining of the price and over time, let it get filled naturally. Don't rush it, okay? Now, I, I need to really bring you guys back because you, got, you guys are in the red, red sea for quite some time and kind of, uh, after some time, you, uh, you know, you're bloody red. <laughs> <laughs> you are like kind of hammered left, right, center, and you forgot about the origins of how you started, all right? The origins is like this. 
Satiris Paribus, all things being equal, in a normal market, the way we go about trading is very easy to make that 5 to 100% profit return in one day. Very, very easy. And quite a number of you traded with me in those seasons, all right? Those were the periods where, you know, if we place an order to buy at 1 and it's trading at 120 or 130, we will change the order just to get filled because it's very bullish in those kind of market environment. Right now, it's the reverse. Right now, we must, even if it's showing you, you can buy $1, do not buy $1, buy at 60 cents or 70 cents, always place a further discount, all right? And then let the market makers come to you. Okay, enough said about that. And, you know, right now it's live live on the screen. We're going to find the most important article <coughs> that we're going to uh, kind of uh, decide what is going to move for today itself, right? So let me open up um, uh, my uh, CNBC. And usually, you know, because right now we are uh, at the off-peak earnings season, uh, there are not many companies on earnings. And those that are on earnings, like announcing after today's bell or tomorrow before the opening bell, we have left with a very sm much smaller pool. And typically, when the net uh, stock purchase is slow, we don't even look at it. I typically look for net universe, net stock purchase, $1 billion or more. Then we can go in and do our much deeper analysis. If not, then we look at what the market has to offer today. All right. So first thing, I go and refresh and make sure you always do this step. And, you know, uh, one, one very exciting thing about Apple, I want you guys to do this really challenging step. Thing about Apple, all right? And I'm going to demonstrate live to you how you do what we call the ground check, all right? So here we go. We're going to go to uh, apple.com, A-P-P-L-E.com. And I'm going to walk you through the steps and use the same steps to do the ground check, okay? So for example, you are in apple.com, but depends on you're watching this YouTube right now from which country, right? So I want to do the ground check on Sing in Singapore, now, if you're watching from US, you definitely select United States or if you're watching from Hong Kong, just switch to the to your country of choice because all these are interlinked how we do our ground check, all right? So I'm going to select Singapore and make sure after you selected Singapore, you check on continue, click on continue, boom. And take, for example, I'm going to look for iPhone 14, all right? And I click on buy. Are you aware of the fact that you know, CNBC has already, you know, invited the real hardcore uh, Apple fanatics on the live TV to talk about which iPhone 14 we should buy. And the one that keeps popping out is iPhone Pro Max, all right? So I'm going to select iPhone Pro Max to determine how hot, hot is this product, all right? I'm going to click on iPhone Pro Max right now, bang, and just randomly select a color go. And I selected go and then go for the highest spec. All right, the, the highest spec is one terabyte, sing dollars, $2,629. All right, going to select the highest spec, click on this one. And then we select the Apple Care. Just, just imagine you are going to buy the phone, right? So I'm going to add Apple Care at 369. Click on add. And then this is what we want to see. Once we arrive at this page, this is what I want to show you. Look at this for yourself. Look at this. This is the giveaway to us investing in this particular stock, knowing for a fact that the demand is so strong, you will not receive your iPhone 14 Pro Max until 26th of October. One month later. Can you see that? So how could one of the richest companies on earth is delivering their products late, provided, number one, the demand is so high and the supply is so low, there's a gap of one month late delivery. So these are the things that we need to check. And I mean, they are all geared up for the show. They even partner with Amazon Singapore if you buy through Amazon, you get like, uh, I, I think if I'm not wrong, $100 or $200 voucher 
that you can take the money, buy some other things. Snap out straight away, gone, boom. And then I got friends who are buying the, the iPhone 14 Pro Max in bulk. They are buying like 100 pieces, 200 pieces just to do a sub-sale in the black market. That's the kind of data we want to look at, all right? So you go and cross-verify this information and you can double-check this on the iWatch Ultra. You can, But you must go for the highest-end product. Then you get a feel, you know, this is the product that is not just aspirational. Those who are cash-rich will just buy at an instant. And now you want to buy, sorry, you're going to wait until November, all right? And that's the kind of data I want to show you, right? So I think for a start, you know, why we arrived at Apple? Because we were here. First thing I spotted this, Apple may be seeing a demand split for iPhone 14 models. Bank of America says, all right, a demand for more expensive iPhone 14 models appears to be relatively strong compared to the standard model, which is the Pro Max. It's what I just demonstrated to you. So I don't just read this guy here, and then take it as it is. We will do some form of triangulation or cross-verification just to be convinced what the headline is talking about is a real, real headline, right? And while I'm speaking about this, can you see the market kind of uh, turn around? Stocks rebound from early earlier losses in volatile trading. Ahead of the Fed decision, suddenly the three indices decided to turn green. All right, so this is like this is the this is the period where things just move very fast on, from green to red, red to green, green to red, red red to green. Or just uh, just make sure you're very used to this and don't fear it. All right, this is a very very common in the marketplace. Okay, so I'm looking at this right now, and uh, this is great news. And if it rises a uh, hundred points, means my interpretation is the market has accepted a seventy five basis point rate hike. Uh, looks like what we discussed on Saturday and Sunday may not, the Fed may not go for 100 basis point height, all right? That's why the market is willing to turn green. Uh, that's my interpretation for now. I've not dived deeper to go and analyze more things, all right? So let's take it from there and here we go. And can you see what we discussed over the weekend? Traders worry there are more earning, earnings warnings like FedEx about to come out, all right? So we already discussed at length about Subramaniam. <laughs> Enough of that guy, okay? And we go from here. We're going to go from the latest news this part, trying to, uh, you know, kind of uh, pick out what is really important to us today. And I kind of uh, zoom, zoom. And here we go. We're going to start the process right here. And let me just shift up a little bit more so that my uh, picture doesn't block it, all right? So here we go. Uh, I just scroll down live in front of you and I've not made up my mind what is the most important article of the day yet. I urge you to do the same, go through the process, be very patient. Uh, typically, Monday, we've got a lot of things to do, all right? So I, I'm just very uh, relaxed right now. Time check about 11 o'clock. Just go through it, okay? Bitcoin drops 5% to its lowest level in three months. Uh, that's because of the news coming out on uh, Ethereum merge. Okay, let it let it let it sink in. Don't have to panic, panic. Can continue go down right here. Um, biggest move, movement: Apple, Amazon, Adobe, Peloton, Bed Bath and Body. All right. So I'm gonna have a little bit bias on Adobe, but I've not made up my mind yet. They acquired a software design tool called Figma. My company, Spiking, is using Figma to do all of our front-end design, all right? So, uh, but analysts on Wall Street are saying that Adobe paid too much money for Figma. So, let me give you a quick demonstration of what, what, I, what we meant by pay too much money, all right? ADB, let's go for it. And this is Adobe. Click on one year and move up. And you can see right now the price start to settle down already, right? So typically we're going to see the chart on the bottom left is 2020. Make sure you have this really, really good habit cultivated and somewhere around here. Oops. No, I got to zoom out a little bit more. Hang on a minute. Ugh. All right. This is nice, nice. Okay. 
And guess where we are right now? We are at the lowest point and it's defined as $300, all right? Now, this lowest point coincided with the fact that back then, during the pandemic, it fell into the red box that I just drawn. Right now, with the purchase acquisition of Figma, it again fell into the red box, all right? So this is a very, very strong signal. It is holding at $300. Now, with that, then I zoom in here. Now you can see very clearly, right? Just now I draw the red box. It's floating at $300 range. Pong! This is the range we are talking about. Now, the first time they announced, the first time that they announced about the acquisition, there was a spike now. A very, very big spike down right over here. Okay? That's from 375 dropped to 310. And then Wall Street is still not satisfied. Bring it further down to below 300. Today is trading at 296, all right? Now, what everybody is saying is that wait, do not go in because they expect from here to go down some more, all right? Then we have to trace back what's the lowest, lowest it can go down so, you know, I always like to have this kind of uh, interest cultivated and I move back to 2020. Remember, right? 2020. Where's my 2020? Where's my 2020? Is around here, right? So you can see this is the lowest, lowest of 2020. This cluster here, okay? Now in this cluster, the lowest possible price it can possibly go in touch is 250. Okay? But if you want to be really anal about it, it's really catching the hair right there, right? Can you see the hair right there? I try to put the hair inside my little mini tiny rectangle right there. And that is about the middle between 300 and 250. And the answer is 275. All right? So that's how I determine my 275 right there. Okay? So you know, uh, using this as the exemplar, if you want to buy 300, it's already a rock bottom price. But if you want to catch the really, really seriously discounted bottom, bottom price, you aim for 250. But is it realistic to get triggered at 250? I think the probability is only about, about 10%. But if you take the middle between 300 and 250, is it realistic to, to catch this one and bounce back? Yes, it is very realistic because it has happened before whereby the hair of the candle drop inside 275, boom, and then bounce up again. All right? So it has happened three times. Three hair has have entered into the mini mini. Uh, red rectangular box that I've shown you right over there, okay? So I have some thinking about Adobe right now, but is this still the most important article of the day? Not yet. We have not really, you know, scout through yet. And then we continue. All right. 39 trillion US retirement system. And there's an upgrade on Netflix. That's because of this upgrade, I was able to exit from my Netflix position with a profit, all right? So... Uh, that's done, done already. Uh, then we move on, continue. Five things to know, downgrade, NCR. By the way, for NCR, are you guys aware of the fact that in Asia, majority of the ATM machines are powered by NCR? So the next time you go to take your ATM card to withdraw from the, the, the automated teller, right? you will see the NCR logo that looks a bit like an infinity sign, all right? So let me show you the NCR logo and uh, I want you all to be like uh, very curious about the logo, all right? So uh, uh, here we go. So that when you go to the bank machine, uh, you can see it for yourself. This is the NCR logo, right? That looks like infinity, all right? Two loops, right? And then... Uh, I'm going to put in like a ATM. Uh-huh. 
So you will see it's like uh, this is the machine that powers majority of the ATM machines worldwide. All right. So just remember this logo right here. Okay. So I'm done on that. And then we come back to here. Any other interesting stuff that we need to read? Suez Canal fee hike won't have a big impact on trade flows. Okay. Uh, today we have the big queens, Queen, Queen Elizabeth funeral. And, you know, uh, typically in a major funeral like this, like this, it is a very, very powerful social signal. I can tell you it's a very, very powerful social signal. Um, you know, I recall the days back then when, you know, Singapore's founding father, Lee Kuan Yew, passed away. And I remembered in order for me to avoid the long queue, I went at 4 a.m. in the morning and I started queuing. So I queued for about, not that long, about 30 minutes, I remember. I think about 30 minutes because nobody is crazy enough like me to go at 4 a.m. <laughs> and I joined the queue. You know, as you're about to enter to the parliament house, you know, you start to feel the the aura, the presence of, of the founding father, right? And, and the moment you enter and you know you're the next one in front of the coffin and you want to bow down and pay your respects, wow, that feeling is so strong. You know, I remember I, uh, I was tearing away. And just thinking back, you know, what founding father has done for our country, Singapore. And this is, I believe, what most Singaporeans gone through who, you know, pay the last respect to the founding father. But why I bring this up? Because in a big occasion, uh, not occasion, the, in a big funeral settings like this, it also uh, is a very powerful social signal that the family of the disease will send to the public, right? Who is uh, standing at what position behind the casket? Uh, who, who, who is doing what? All these are very powerful social signals. So if you just think about what is going on right now, I, I think the live event was over already today. And, you know, the king and the two princes, where they stand, what they wear, go and study it. It's a really, really fascinating um, uh, study of uh, social signals. Uh, so, yeah, take a look at that. And um, back then... When um, when uh, founding father passed away, one of the most powerful social signal was actually Hong Kong's richest man who came to pay his respect, and that's Lee Ka Shin and his son, right? So two of them came, uh, kind of escorted by uh, our our prime minister's wife, Madam Ho Chin, and uh, then of course there are many uh, leaders who came and paid their respects as well, right? But he was one of the earliest to to pay the respect. Okay, why am I talking about this? No idea. <laughs> I just thought I wanted to share this with you. And for those of you who are in UK, I'm not too sure how many of you actually took the time to pay your respects. I know David Beckham queued like for 14 hours, I read the report. He was in the queue, I think, I think 14 hours just to pay his respects. And if you are in UK, and you know, if uh, you are proud British, you should go and uh, pay a respect. Uh, not too sure, I think it's officially over already. And yeah, okay, let's continue. I'm kind of interested in this. Uh, solar stock can search nearly 60%. Uh, we can take a look in a short while. Uh, we're going to kind of open up this, uh, this link later on. Next is uh. S&P could retest its bear market low, according to chart analysts. And any other thing that we need to look about, we just spoke about Adobe. I kind of give you my feeling about the price point. And what else need to be do, needs to be done? And China's economy may have done well in August, but outlook remains grim. No, everything about China, we have to wait until 16th of October has passed through uh, smoothly, all right? So I kind of op only open up one article right here. This is the one about solar stock on improved forward outlook. And from here, we are looking at array technologies, all right? Uh, I just want to pick out the important points. 
Looks like it's uh, at a high price right now. Um, price target is 28, up from 20. It's already 57% above Friday's close of 17, all right? So this guy has kind of already moved and um, not very keen on this, all right? Let me just double check. ARRY, here we go. Yep, it has already moved. Uh, we always dis determine the movement, the moment is above the 200 day simple moving average. So we missed it already, all right? So I'm uh, not gonna chase chase after this guy, but just now there was an article about S&P. I think that is the most important article of the day. Let me show you where, and this is the one, okay? S&P 500 could retest its bear market low as Fed meeting looms, according to chart analysts. So we go back here and do a S&P. GSPC is the ticker symbol. We zoom out. And we know the low low is 3750. All right, so let's draw the line. This is the low low we are talking about, 3750. And today we are in a very dangerous position right here, 3881. And all it needs is Wednesday's announcement to drive this guy nuts. It, will, it might be a hair drop into it and then bounce up. It depends on how crazy Fed Chairman wants to do, whether it's a 75 basis or 100 or 125. Nobody knows yet, all right? Uh, I don't think you can front run what the Fed, cha Fed Chairman is thinking about. Okay, so this is what everybody is thinking about right now. And this article is really, really important. Okay, I want, I want to know what the chartists are thinking about. We are looking at 3750, but the chartists, they are looking at something lower than that. 3500. Mama. Woohoo! Now, the 3800 is close to what we just analyzed, which is the 3750, all right? And the justification for 3500 boils down to Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. Now, why the heck this guy doesn't want to look at Apple? I don't understand, <laughs> all right? So, uh, just because of these three guys, Alphabet, NVIDIA, and Microsoft, He's thinking about a 3500, all right? Now, this is dangerous because the moment you take one guy to start preaching about it, everybody start believing in it. So, down here is the 3009, okay? And he's also included Apple. That's another chartist, all right? That's the chief market technician at BTIG. He's also attributing to Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet and Amazon, all right? They might be gay, they might be giants, but some of the biggest marquee names in the market continue to look vulnerable to us here. All right. Woohoo! So we got to relook our 3750 to 500. Let's go back. We got to check this back. Oh my gosh, this is uh, horrible. Okay, let me show you what they are thinking about and what they are talking about. And let me just adjust. Bottom left, 2020. And here we go. Woohoo! 3005. They are talking about this red box right now, right? They are expecting it to go as low as 3005. Now, 3750 is kind of a, what we believe should be the support uh, line. But because of the mama stocks, all right, they believe it will touch 3,005. Let's find some justification for the mama stocks. Here we go. Microsoft was mentioned. I didn't change the timeline. And, you know, why they believe it will touch 3,500? Because I think they are looking at Microsoft dropping to 225. Okay, I didn't change any of the timeline. Just remember, it's really common sense. And I just put my red box there, right? And uh, I can go back one more step to make sure I got the same red box. Okay, just now my box was um, 
3750 to 3500. All right. So I'm going to keep this box there. I'm going to keep this red box there and I'll bring it back in a short while and going to bring back my uh, Microsoft and I bring back my red box. And then I use the same red box to adjust. I think this is what they are talking about, all right? So I'm using the same red box to adjust. They're expecting Microsoft to drop to 225, all right? No problem. Now we look at Apple. Same, uh, didn't change any of the settings just now. And I adjust my red box. They are thinking about 125.75 divided by 235, 32.5. All right. They're expecting Apple to touch about 132.5. That's the bottom of my red box. Okay. Next, we can look at uh, Meta. It's uh, really already collapsed already. So that's a quick one. Boom. This one only look. There's a bottom already. Bottom went below the worst time of the pandemic so not in the consideration anymore next is uh, alphabet google and i bring back my red box now i adjust they're expecting it google to touch about probably 90 dollars oh my gosh that will be in it'll break 100 touch 90 um and I, I believe that you will touch 90 and then go back above 100, all right? Because that 100 is a very, very strong support line, a strong, strong, uh, strong number, all right? So MAM, AA, one more, Amazon. Bring back my red box. Here we go. It's expecting Amazon to touch 100. All right, so we got Amazon and Google. Uh, attempting to touch 100. That will be a 20% drop from the current price of maybe 120, all right? Okay, so I some, I've got some thinking right now and the thinking is surrounded on this. Here we go. We went through the mama and I found some sweet spot price. Uh, I'm thinking about 100. And if 100 is the real test price we need to test, then I'm willing to take a bet. I want the hair drop of the candle to touch my 100. And I know that will be a heavily, heavily, heavily discounted price. Right? Now, there will be three scenarios among all of you today. Number one, if you have existing positions in any of the mama stocks that we talk about, and you go and chase the rock bottom price, that means the bottom of my red box here, and it got triggered. Congratulations, you have averaged down at a protective price. All right, scenario number one. Scenario number two, those of you who don't own any of the mama stocks, then, you know, if the chatties are, uh, uh, their predictions are true, then you have the chance to pick up great stocks at damn discounted price, all right? Really, really great discounted price. You just boom, touch, and then bounce. So that's scenario number two. Scenario number three, those of you after listening to this thesis, you got totally flabbergasted, totally bombasted, you con 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 concussion mode. <laughs> and you say, don't want to do anything, perfectly fine as well, right? Because that's what we do as uh, traders and investors in the market. We read the most important article and we say, what can we make sense out of it? And that's my takeaway for today's most important article of the day. Okay? So, Wednesday is the big day. We got 48 hours counting down to Wednesday. And, you know, between now to Wednesday, if you are uncomfortable trading ahead of the big volatility, it's perfectly fine to stay out of it. But I'll just keep trading every day just to make sure I'm in tune with the market. And we have reformulated our thinking about interest rate hikes. Uh, if you have missed that, please go and review our previous YouTube videos and pick up something from there. And for those of you who are on our Don't Stop Believing Trade notification, I'll be firing off one trade exactly from this hot article that I just shared with you today. I think 
I spotted something that's very, very interesting. And we're going to test that this is out. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. And again, you know, I wish that you will join me again tomorrow. Just keep up the momentum. Whether if you are trading or not trading, just make sure you keep up on the momentum, all right? Thank you, everyone, for your support. Until we meet again tomorrow. Thank you and God bless you. Goodbye. Thank mm-hmm. you.